Okay. Good afternoon and welcome to the May 3, 2024 meeting of the Rotary Club of Beaver Creek. Uh, thanks to uh, all those who helped get this organized. Our, um, our uh, programs are run by Pete Bales, Mark Weinstein, and Mike Zwick. Uh, thanks to Jim Gundel for handling the website. Thanks to Beth and Eric for setting things up and Eric for being our uh, sub as a uh, secretary. Thanks to Elizabeth Cusack and Denny Jarvey for greeting us. Uh, Denny, would you give us an invocation, please? Well, good afternoon. Would you join me in prayer? Well, Holy Creator, it's good to recognize how different we are. Our talents, our dreams, backgrounds, and occupations. And it's good to know that when you created us, no one is exactly alike. Even the thumbprints and voice trail tell how unique we are. Yet, we thank you that we take these differences and mobilize them for the good of Rotary in our community. In our differences, we can always think the same thoughts and move forward together on a common goal. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. But so our substitute or adjunct secretary, Eric Marcus, do you have a report for us? Yes, I do. We have 24 Beaver Creek Rotarians in attendance. I think it means 50% attendance. And we have three guests. Brian Lambton has a typical guest. Eric, mm -hmm. she is uh, she is not typical. Have you had her? Roxanne has a yes. Yes, yeah, so I'm very happy to have Terry Molden with us today. Terry is the finance director of the Beaver Township. So Terry, welcome. welcome. And we also have we have we're going to get one more. We're going to break fifty percent because Joe went to the Beaver Creek Golf Club for lunch. Obviously, he's not eating a whole lot. All right. Thanks so much. So, uh, I, again, I just want to, um, I think Mike Zwick was behind the, us doing this out here, and it's a great honor to come out here. This is one of those things where a community of our size to have uh, a facility like this is amazing. It reminds me of like Michael's house. I mean, for a community of our size to have that type of facility is unbelievable, and this is included. And uh, Dave Deskins and his people are always so gracious. We appreciate that. Now, the mayor, the president-elect, the legend, <laughs> Don Adams. You are Adam. You're good. I think. So I am on a third touch. Uh, well, this podium's lower than the one I'm used to. <laughs> Today is May 3rd. It's the 124th day of 2000, or 2024. <laughs> There's 242 days left in this year, and it's you realize we are now exactly one third of the way through 2024. <laughs> Today we celebrate Garden Meditation Day, International Space Day, Kentucky Oaks Day. It's always the day before they get yeah. that little race they have down there in the little uh, National Chocolate Custard Day, oh. National Lumpy Rug Day, oh. National Public Radio Day, National Raspberry Popover Day. And I looked around and I didn't see this, but it's also National Two Different Colored Shoes Day. So you didn't pay attention to what was going on. It's also no pants day. I'm really glad you didn't follow that one on that topic. It's uh, paranormal day and school and lunch hero day. We also celebrate this week, choose privacy week. Go diaper free week. That kind of goes along with no pants week. <laughs> Uh, National Auctioneers Week, National Small Business Week, Preservation Week, 
And it's a shame that uh, Brandon's not around. This is the biggest week in American birding. And it's also World Estonia Awareness Week. That was kind of near and dear to my heart, but my wife has Estonia. So today in history, 1765, the first North American Medical College opened in Philadelphia. In 1802, Washington, D.C. was incorporated as a city. In 1830, the first regular steam train passenger service in the U.S. started in South Carolina in a, with a U.S.-built locomotive called the Best Friend of Charleston. In 1845, the first African-American lawyer, Macon B. Allen, was admitted to the bar in Massachusetts. And in 1910, the Intercollegiate Athletic Association of the United States is renamed to the National College Athletic Association, or the NCAA. And I, I wish we could do this. In 1921, West Virginia imposed the first state sales tax. In 1948, I'm sure a lot of you know about this one, the first broadcast of cast of CBS Evening News. It's been the longest running network television or news show on television in the U.S. In 1952 was the first landing of an airplane at Geographic North Pole. In 1960, the Anne Frank House opened in Amsterdam. And another one you probably all listened to in 1971, All Things Considered, premiered on NPR. And this seemed like a large, large number at that time. But in 1999, the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed above 11,000 for the first time. We're not ready for it to go back to that number. Right? Anything has happened in our club in the last week. Uh, we have a birthday. Uh, Stephanie Cronin had a birthday on May 3rd. Well, it's actually today. <laughs> and uh, some member anniversaries, Paul and Nina. Is 22 years. Jim Gundle, 35 years. And Mike has like 40 years. Oh. Have some thoughts to ponder. I read that 4,153,237 people got married last year. And I don't want to cause any trouble, but shouldn't that be an even number? <laughs> <laughs> And I find it ironic that the colors red, white, and blue stand for freedom until they're flashing behind you. <laughs> when, we're, when women are wearing a bikini, they reveal 90% of their body. Men are so polite, they only look at the parts that are covered. <laughs> Relationships are a lot like algebra. Have you ever looked at your ex and wondered why? <laughs> America is a country which produces citizens who will cross the ocean to fight for democracy, but won't cross the street to vote. Either though, no, not true. Yes. Unfortunately. Did you know dolphins are so smart that when within a few weeks of captivity, they can train people to stand on the very edge of the pool, throw the fish. <laughs> I think my neighbor is stalking me, and she's been Googling my name on her computer. I saw it through my telescope last night. <laughs> you're not fat, you're just easier to see. <laughs> if you think nobody cares whether you're alive, try missing a couple of payments, especially at Rotary. I have to apologize for this one, but I always wonder what the job application is like at Hooters. Did they just give you a D-cup raw and say, here, fill this out? <laughs> my therapist said that my narcissism is causing me to mis misread social situation. I'm pretty sure she's just hitting on me. So. <laughs> she's she's coming the pharmacist asked me for my birth date again today. I'm pretty sure she's going to get me something. Oh, 
Money can't buy happiness, but it keeps the kids in touch. Can't buy poverty. That's right. Sharon was walking through the zoo when she noticed Bill was throwing $10 bills into the monkey cage. And curious, she walked over closer and asked, Bill, what are you doing? Why are you giving the monkeys, or the monkeys the money? Signed by the gate says it's okay, he replies. Sherry looks at him quizzically and says it did? She said yes. It said do not feed, $10 fine. <laughs> Remember, April is Procrastination Awareness Month. <laughs> Rebecca said to her husband, you know the neighbor's daughter scored 99 on her math exam? Her husband Tom, sipping his tea, remarked, really? What happened to the remaining one point? Rebecca replied sarcastically, your son got scored. <laughs> Al was talking. He said, I got fired from my job as a bank guard. Sam said, what happened? He said, a thief came into the bank. I drew my weapon and told him that if he took one more step, I'd let him have it. What did you do then? He took one more step, so I let him have it. I didn't need that stupid gun anyway. There was a redneck walked into a hardware store and asked for a chainsaw that will cut six trees in an hour. The salesman recommended the top of the line model. The redneck is suitably impressed and buys it. The next day he brings it back and says, this chainsaw is defective. It would only cut down one tree and it took all gosh darn day. The salesman takes the chainsaw, starts it up to see what's wrong. And the redneck says, what's that noise? <laughs> Two blondes were flying to Miami from Cleveland. 15 minutes into the flight, the captain announced, one of the engines has failed and the flight will be an hour longer. But don't worry, we have three engines left. 30 minutes later, the captain announced, one more engine has failed and the flight will now be two hours longer. But don't worry, we've still got two engines left. An hour later, the captain announced, one more engine has failed, the flight will now be three hours longer. But don't worry, we still got one engine left. One blonde looked at the other blonde and said, we'll use one more engine, we'll be up here all day. <laughs> As always, I like to leave you with a couple of positive notes. So many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. And happiness is not by chance, it's but by choice. Today's fines. If you listen to public radio, that's a dollar. If you've been to the Kentucky Derby, that's a dollar. If you've ever been to Washington, D.C., that's a dollar. If you've ever watched CBS Evening News, that's a dollar. If you've ever meditated, that's a dollar. And if you're not wearing your rotary pins, that's a dollar. Thank you. Right. As always, if we are being honest with ourselves, we should that should be the biggest fundraiser we have is the uh, fines that our sergeant and arms issues. Um, who's got a happy bucks? Frank. I got two happy bucks. Of one um, in relation with Terry Golden. Um, Terry's been with us for almost four years, maybe four years, um, coming later this year. And for the first time ever, uh, Beardrick Township was awarded the Ohio Auditor State Board for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Uh, it's the work that she implements with the vision of Alex and I, um, surely uh, does the taxpayer uh, much good. So I do want to show my appreciation. Thanks, Terry. My second happy book is uh, tomorrow is an international uh, firefighter day. Um, so if you see a firefighter, please um, thank them for their service and all they do uh, protecting us. And then on Sunday is a national uh, fallen firefighter day. So at 12 noon sharp, the European Township Fire Department, your fire department, along with fire departments across the country, 
are going to sound um, their siren in remembrance of all those that have fallen in the service of um, fire switch. <laughs> Who else has happy thoughts? <laughs> Okay, so I have a new grandbaby. So happy buck number one and little granddaughter number three who was born two days ago. <clears throat> happy buck number two that I threw in the kettle uh, is based on an, a letter I received today from this, the United States Education Secretary telling me that schools need to do a better job of keeping kids safe on their campuses. Um, and so I gave a dollar because that's all the input is worth when I get those kinds of <laughs> you needed that nudge, didn't you? Has has had bucks. Here, I have a happy buck. This time next week, I won't be here, so everybody will come to Rotary because I won't be around. I'll be in Basel, Switzerland, waiting for the start of my Rhine River cruise to Amsterdam on Saturday. Wow! Right. Who else? It sounded Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I have a happy buck. So um, we've um, been trying to work with uh, the music program on getting a regular uh, weekend annually for our pancake breakfast. Makes it easier, makes it easier to market, makes it easier to plan for. Um, and so we we haven't gotten there yet, and we're, we're probably not going to do that this year. Um, but we were able to discover a substitute, and we are going to do uh, pancakes at the uh, Creek Classic soccer tournament out at uh, Ankeny Fields. And that's June 1st and 2nd. And it, it appears that the way it's gonna work is really easy. The concession stand will deal with the cash and give a ticket and the ticket will come to us and we'll give them two pancakes. Don't have to mess with sausage, coffee, juice, and uh, should be a decent fundraiser. So we're working on that. You should have seen a sign up sheet come around and uh, so, we're going to look to gather people to man those things, but uh, that's where we are, and I'm happy that we have that opportunity. Uh, other happy bucks? I'll pick up the World Affairs this weekend at the, uh, at the county uh, uh, fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. Daughters are uh, dancing a couple of the days, so come on out. All right. And you're going to help us with uh, any type of uh, permits or inspections out at uh, at the fields. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. And Joe Jenkins offered to help us with uh, staging and stuff like that at his property, which is a no definitely. Yes, sir. Go along. We said World Affair tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. There's a naturalization ceremony at the World Affair. Never been to one. Or go attend it. It's, it's, it's really good, like yourself. So. I've been to about 35 right? <laughs> All right. So ticket drawing uh, for the chance to draw for the Queen of Hearts and split the pot with our Christmas basket project. The number is 339-485. Somebody out of joy. Right. <laughs> draw. Right. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah. All the it's great. I know this new class person always wins. Hot grows. Hot grows. All right. Any announcements at this time? Okay. Well, I'm gonna uh, introduce our uh, host out here today, Dave Deskins. Believe it or not, has been here uh, almost 10 years now. This will be the 10th year, won't it? Yes. Anniversary in the fall. Um, and uh, he has uh, a history in education. Um, he spent two years as the Human Resources Director at Penta Career Center near Toledo. Also served six years as the Superintendent for Archibald Area Local Schools in Northeast Ohio, Northwest Ohio, before coming our way. He uh, shepherded us into this uh, era of this facility of $62 million, give or take, probably more than that uh, project, a successful bond campaign. And, um, you know, the timing couldn't have been more appropriate as he shifted towards uh, more technical training and less emphasis on uh, needed for a college degree or necessary of college degree. And uh, we're excited to hear what's going on out here. I will say Dave's got... <laughs> 
many balls in the air right now. He's got people out uh, looking at jobs uh, from the facility. That he's got, and it's their finals week, right? For, for those seniors, he's got uh, kids coming in to see the facility and consider coming from our local school districts out here. And uh, what else you got going on? Blood drive. Blood drive. Blood drive. Yeah, because you didn't have enough going on. So yeah. uh, all right, but uh, Dave does. <laughs> so, so much to say and never enough time. Um, we are really blessed to be in a facility that really is the state of the art place in Ohio. Uh, I know that our state representative gets around the state, has seen other current technical centers. Uh, this will really kind of set the mold for the state. We're really super thrilled for that. Um, building construction, actually, um, we budgeted an $80 million project for the school you're sitting in. We needed $62 million in bond funding that our, our communities were gracious enough to give us on a first ask, which almost never happens in Green County. Um, and we were able to, to attain the $62 million. The district had saved $18 million that we wanted to put towards the project as well. So all told, we came in about $2 million under budget. Um, the building that you're sitting in is uh, about 265,000 square feet wow. from the door you entered, door number seven, to the far end of our high bay labs is 310 yards. It's the longest hallway in a high school in Ohio. Um, <laughs> that's what the contractors told us. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, the the reality is when I arrived here in 2014, there were 500 kids on our main campus and we have 1,100 kids scheduled to come here next year. Um, we served about 1,000 kids in the county school districts. We run programs outside of this building called satellite programs. So we have career tech teachers in all of the schools in Greene County and students in your local school districts take those courses from teachers who work here at the Career Center. All told, we serve about 3,700 kids around the county in our satellite programs. So we push about 4,000 kids. This past year, we began another initiative uh, based on some funding that was provided by Governor DeWine to start de developing a way to get kids exposed to career opportunities at younger ages. Why? Because we all know that the trades are starving for, for enough people. Um, every single day at the meeting, every single business owner tells me we need more people in our industry. I don't care what it is. Um, we stayed really in tune with the uh, workforce market here in the region. When we arrived in 2016, we wanted to be sure that what we built aligned to what the job needs were in the region at the time. So we conducted a market analysis here in the Dayton area to find out what are the jobs we should be building programs for. If we're gonna build this space. We know the popular place positions, but what are the jobs that are going unfilled at the highest numbers in the Dayton region that we can impact? Um, and predominantly that stirred around Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, not by accident. You know, it's the third largest military installation in the country. It receives the largest amount of federal research and development money. So everybody wants to locate here and try to get contracts with the government. Um, on top of that, it's Ohio's largest single site employer. So more people work at wright Pat Air Force Base than any other location in the state of Ohio. That's a big deal to us. So we wanted to know what should we be building this place? Um, following that research that we conducted way back in 2016, 17, the three predominant, really four predominant workforce openings in our region were number one, engineering. So believe it or not, you would think, oh, there's no way we need more engineers. But at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, we do because of all the contracts and all the work that they do for R&D. Um, second largest need in our region at the time was manufacturing. Third largest need was IT, but it wasn't necessarily computers. Uh, it was uh, computer software development. It was cybersecurity. It was drone technologies, all surrounding job market needs around wright Pat Air Force Base. So the fourth, by the way, was health sciences. Um, so when we built this space, we built it on purpose to really accommodate the needs of what the jobs told us were the highest market needs. Why do we do that? Because I want, like, I want our kids to stay around. You know, we have a terrible trend going on in Ohio right now that people get a bachelor's degree and they move out because they can't find a job in Ohio. They don't have that trouble if they're getting certifications and credentials right now in Ohio. Everybody who wants to find work right now in our space is being begged for it. 
Um, we've been really heavily involved in Intel's move to Ohio. Uh, we partnered um, with Columbus State because we conducted a specialized research with Intel um, along with Ohio State to create kind of a just a consensus of what are the main job duties that people in manufacturing in Ohio should have. And should we be teaching those at career centers and community colleges so that every kid walking out is ready for a job in a manufacturing field? So what are those competencies? What are those kind of required credentials that a student should need? Well, we leaned in heavy to that research that was conducted by Columbus State and pulled them into our space and actually began working with Honda that's going to be locating down in Jamestown. Why does this matter? Because here are our predictions based on the markets and the analysis. Our predictions are those jobs are offering outlandish money. So just so you're aware, right now the Gen Zers are shifting their title. We're moving them to now the tool belt generation because they're all recognizing I can make way more money than my college friend by just getting a trade or a skilled competence. Um, and so what we're seeing happen is we're seeing people leaving the work trades to move to the to the Joby and Honda and Intel jobs because their entry level technician positions are paying 130,000 a year. It's really the equivalent of a two year associate's degree or if you're a career tech kid, two years as a high school student. And you can walk out of the school and go make $120,000 or $130,000 a year at either of those three companies. That's a big deal. Um, and so we recognize that what's going to happen is all the people who are now in plumbing and carpentry and HVAC who are making seventy dollars or 80000 a year are going to see a chance to upskill and move over to $120,000 a year. And we're going to have an even bigger vacuum. A skill trace. Um, and so we're leaning in heavily to that. Uh, next year, we're preparing to open an HVAC lab down on the other end of the building, um, built for an extra uh, construction space. But we had waited to kind of see what the trend was. We wanted to wait on more market analysis. We've now received that market analysis. The patterns of job needs have shifted a little bit. Number one is manufacturing. Number two now in our region is healthcare. Um, which is really interesting. And number three is the skill trades. So we're talking construction, HVAC, plumbing, et cetera. Um, so we pay really close attention to that. We've been a career center who has made all of our decisions based on the data. We want to make the choices that are rightly aligned with what they're telling us the needs are so that we're responding to our business leaders in the ways that they need to hear. Um, and it's not by accident that this school is here. All of this was very intentional. Um, I can't say thank you enough. I get very emotional about this place because when you walk through these walls, kids come out here and they become different, different kids. Um, they find a different purpose for serving because they can do something hands-on that's meaningful. They gain a different confidence. All of a sudden, math, science, social studies, and English are tolerable because they get to rip apart an airplane engine and put it back together, or they get to go and you know pr prepare food in a culinary setting while they work towards chef-related training and their serve safe licensures and the other things that they earn while they're students here. Um, so it's a life-changing place, this school that you all have supported. Um, and so it's not by accident, and I'm really appreciative. It would not have been here without your help. To say thank you as a community, we have been working diligently to position ourselves as a school district to try to be able to pay our bond debt off at half of its call. So we have a 20 year bond and our intention was to save the funds to be eligible to pay the debt in full at the 10 year mark, which would save over $42 million in tax collections in our town. Um, here's my problem, we're now at capacity I now have people telling me we need more space, we need more building, we need more activity, we need to get going. And so now I'm trying to figure out how I can keep that pledge and commitment because that was really important to me, while also figuring out how to continue the growth that we need to maintain, which is why we're kind of at the front edge of this. So when we built this building, we were not able to get any funding from the state for the construction of this space. We attempted heavily. Um, Senator Hackett was really helpful in helping us get an item in the budget bill that would have allowed one career center a year to receive the average amount being spent on all the K-12 schools in Ohio. 
um, and the governor could pick where it should go based on data analysis. I liked our chances. I had already done the data analysis. I helped to write the law and the language, and we were able to get it in front of the Ohio Senate and the Ohio House back in the Kasich regime. Um, and at the uh, 11th hour on June the 30th, the governor decided to veto 24 items out of 2,500. And one of the 24 items he vetoed was our language to promote funding for career technical centers. Um, I continued whining about it because I felt like it was wrong that kids go into a regular K-12 school because I worked in one and they could walk into a brand new building. But if I sent a kid to my local career technical center, she was going into a 1940s and 50s structure or she was. And so it felt really unfair to me that those kids were not getting the same opportunities. And so I kept whining and I kept whining and I kept whining. Last year in the budget bill, Governor DeWine implemented $200 million for construction dollars to go towards career technical centers and $100 million to go towards equipment to support career tech ed. We have been able to, to secure about $405,000 of those funds to go towards uh, a program or two programs that we're off starting, one being HVAC, and then we're doing a pretty big expansion in our health sciences and sports and exercise sciences programs, both because those are two of the three largest job market needs in the region. Um, so we've worked diligently, but the probably most fun part of it, I get really mad that we always are the leader on these things, but we're always chasing the funding um, I get really uh, excited when the Ohio School Facilities Commission contacts us, says we want to come out and take a tour of your building. We're rewriting our manual on how to build career centers. And now around the state of Ohio, the model for career tech ed is our building. Um, and that's really flattering to us. Uh, so we're grateful, although we feel like we're always chasing uh, the funding side of it. Um, we, we, continue, we continue to press on. Um, we're now at a position where we're considering some other alternative options. Um, and so Representative Lampton, give me grace, is one of these you haven't heard a lot about. Um, I had a meeting um, with Senator Hackett. I guess let me preface that. The, the Career Center was contacted about four months ago by the Dayton Area Foundation and the Dayton Development Coalition. Um, and they asked if we would be willing to sit down with a couple of research members that they have doing some job market analysis in the Dayton region because they're heavily concerned about the workforce needs in Dayton. Um, so to no surprise, and maybe these numbers will be of surprise to you, the Dayton region alone is projecting that by 2025, we will have 30,000 vacant jobs in existing companies. We will have an additional 20,000 jobs of new companies coming to Ohio because we're attracting like crazy, but we're not really readying the workforce. Um, and so the concern that the Dayton Area Foundation and the, the DDC have is that we're not going to be preparing kids or adults fast enough for this market, and we've got to change our strategy. So apparently they're working with a donor in the Greene County area who said, well, I like what I see going on at the Green County Career Center. Maybe you could work with them and find a solution. So we have been meeting with the research teams from DDC and the Dayton Area Foundation, and their boards blessed a project that we kind of wanted to run as a pilot initiative that would allow us to turn out about 120 to 130 adults into a trade in manufacturing about every eight to 10 weeks. And they asked if we would consider piloting it here at our career center this summer. Um, we were thrilled to be a part of it. We said yes. And they said the only dilemma we have is we need to see if we can secure funding. <laughs> so we met with Senator Hackett. Uh, we knew that the state had allocated budget uh, funds through the Senate and the House, um, equating to about $700 million in unspent ARRA funds, so still spending COVID money that the state received. And they are planning to provide this funding to the state senators and the state representatives to kind of figure out how to spend it. And so we decided that we wanted to approach Senator Hackett and see if he would consider this. All the while working on other initiatives for the Career Center, this we felt was a pretty big project for all of the region, because if we can start pouring out 120 to 150 trained, certified, credentialed employees every eight to 10 weeks, we could start making a dent on the Dayton market need. 
Um, so anyhow, we uh, we met with Senator Hackett and bless his soul. He always is so gracious to work with me, but he wanted to coordinate a meeting for me to meet with the Lieutenant Governor to share the plan with the Lieutenant Governor. And so a week and a half ago, I went to Columbus. Um, um, Senator Hackett, because he's Senator Hackett, picked up the phone and called the Lieutenant Governor who was on vacation and scheduled an appointment to meet with me. So I'm interrupting his vacation and I'm the first face he sees when he comes back into the office. So I go into the meeting. Um, in the meeting, I share with, I don't, but the research team share with them the data that they've collected, kind of the synopsis of the plan. Um, Lieutenant Governor is not sure. He thinks that a lot of people have ideas for how to start a workforce project. What well, makes this project different than any other? Uh, my comment response was two things make this different. The first thing that makes this different is you know a career tech superintendent who has been really successful in turning out high quality projects and product. Um, and so number one, you're giving money to a resource that you know is going to be successful with intentionality. Number two, we believe that this is a really unique way to spend the money because we're taking people from different pockets of the Dayton region, bringing them in as a cohort to train together, putting wraparound services for childcare and transportation, and doing the things that someone would need to break a poverty cycle in order to be able to get into this arena, and then partnering with a company who will agree to pay them while they train and pay them more when they complete. So we believe it's a cool model. We think it's the full circle model, but we think if you can help with a little bit of resource, we think it could be a really impactful thing that could be replicated across Ohio. Um, and the Lieutenant Governor, uh, for those of you who know him, for those of you who don't, he, he's very strong in opinion. Um, and so he was very strong in his agreement or disagreement with that model um, and pretty much declined that that was an option that he felt like would have value. Um, so it made me mad. And so sometimes when I meet with some of our leaders and we try to be rational and we try to really bring them data-driven option, um, we go a different direction. And so we did. We pivoted from the lieutenant governor because what he didn't know is that I had already made arrangements to meet with the finance chairs in a couple of the other places in Columbus. Um, and so I left the lieutenant governor's office and I went upstairs to Senator Dolan's office, who's the chair of the finance committee, who's been on site to tour our facility, um, even though he's from way over in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Um, and we basically then said, we're pivoting. We're not going to talk about the Dayton initiative. We think we will use the donor in the Dayton area. We are now interested based on input that we've received in Greene County to consider building a public safety facility that will be unlike any other in Ohio. Um, it would encompass firefighter training one and two. It would encompass EMT or EMS training. It would encompass um, um, dispatch services. It would encompass law enforcement. It would have a burn tower and it would have a high tech shooting range. Uh, and it would be unlike any other in the state of Ohio and we want to be the leader in doing it. Um, about four months ago, we purchased a software program um, in conjunction with the Department of Public Safety that is a law enforcement officer virtual reality training system. And basically what it does is you gear a police officer up and they line up in front of a screen that all of us can stand behind and watch. And we get to watch their engagement with a critical incident. Okay. What's really unique about this VR system is I can adjust the situation. So we can put that officer in a really critical, dangerous place. We can de-escalate a situation. We can re-escalate a situation. We can gauge how that officer trains on when it's appropriate to go hands-on with the defendant and when it isn't. All of those things kind of coupled with the meeting um, from our township. You, you know, Ryan, thank you. You kind of were one of the first to start that. Alex, many years ago, began this discussion on the firefighter side. After I met with Ryan, and these are the details you don't know, I walked out of your office and I walked into a meeting with the sheriff who told me there were a lot of challenges around the dispatch services in the county. And we had a great discussion about what could or couldn't be done in a more unified way with that. And then I left that meeting and I went over to a meeting with the city of Xenia and they informed me that they were communicating with the Cincinnati FBI office about a possible shooting range initiative that could allow something more local in our region 
that could be used by multiple agencies here in the Southwest Ohio area. Um, so after Lieutenant Governor made a map, my number changed from 1.25 million, and I went upstairs and asked Senator Dolan to consider $18 million from the 700 million to help cover the issue. Um, so Lieutenant Governor doesn't know that yet. They won't give me that much. Um, so Representative Lampton, we need the House to really come together because those dollars are probably going to be sitting if we don't know how they're going to get to be dispelled between the Senate and the House. Um, but that is a pretty big initiative uh, that we would undertake. It would be about probably half the cost of this project. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out the best approach and the best balance with that. Um, but we definitely know that there's a massive need for those first responders in our region. And uh, we're hopeful that we can try to address that problem as a region. Um, so today uh, in our building, we have a few things going on. Um, we have become kind of a host site for the Dayton Development Coalition and the County Economic Development Place. Businesses who are looking to locate in this area or in the Xenia area have been asking to use our site as a meeting place. So they bring them on site, we get to host them and make them feel great and let them get around and see what training occurs here. And almost all of them walk away blown away by what's happening with high school kids in Ohio. Um, two or three of the companies that we've hosted are out of country companies. Um, that are looking to position uh, companies or business on the other end of Innovation Drive. Uh, and the big one of their big attractions that they keep communicating to our economic development teams is how impressed they are with the, the interest of a community to invest in kids the way we have. Um, so again, kind of back to circle, all of you are responsible for that. We would not have been able to offer these things um, without you. Uh, today in the building, a few things happening. Um, thank you. Yes, we have uh, the blood drive going on with the Red Cross. Um, we have the Culinary Arts Lab actually opens a restaurant three days a week through the school year, Thursday, Friday, and or Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Those are open to the public, and they were jammed today. Chef was calling me and blowing my phone up like, my kids are running that down there. I hope you're in charge. And I'm like, yeah, I'm in charge. We have everything set up, but here down for a minute. Sorry, incredible. Um, they're gonna do fine. We spend a lot of time with our kids working on employability skills. So one of the things we heard from our 400 business partners was we need kids to know when to put their phone down. We need them to look us in the eye and have a conversation. Amen. We need to know that they can talk like a human being to us and that they have some confidence, and we want you to work on that. So we created something about two years ago that became a graded component for our students, and we call it an employability grade. Um, and we grade kids on, uh, did you come prepared for class? Did you come with, with your computer charged ready to do your day? Are you interacting in group projects appropriately, or are you not participating? When your crazy superintendent walks around with strangers and introduces you and makes you talk to them, do you respond appropriately? Um, and we've started grading kids on that. And what we're finding is they start preparing differently. They start learning those habits. They start doing those things because they know it could affect their grade. And if they want to get a good grade in the class, they want to get that right. Super excited by that is that we've had a couple of school districts, one of which was Beaver Creek, who called to say, what the heck are you doing? Like, this is really cool. We think we might want to start incorporating that as a graded component here in our district. So we are not the old green joint. Um, for those who have been in this building and for those who have not, this is not at all the same place. We offer this similar programming but we have way higher end technologies. We have way more going on with what our students are expected to turn out. Um, we have about, uh, as any of you who tour the building today, you're gonna find, we have about 300 kids that are out on job placement, seniors. So during their senior year, they get to go out a couple of days a week and start working with a business and an industry. Most of them hire our kids before they ever finish high school. Most of our students walk out of here if they want a job with a company that they've entered with. Um, we sold that model not by any you know, work of ours. The University of Cincinnati has one of the most remarkable apprenticeship programs and internship programs in the country. What we know is when we put students out to work with employers, the employer gets to work with and train that student 
they either start to like them or they realize it's not a good match, most often they end up hiring these students. Um, over 85% is Cincinnati's placement rate, by the way. So we stole the model. It's brilliant. Um, and why wouldn't it work everywhere for, for students? So for those who don't know what a career center does, we bring kids here their junior and senior year. They still graduate from the year high schools. So if they're a Beaver Creek student, they still get a diploma from Beaver Creek High School. But I now have to track all of my Beaver Creek kids to make sure they're meeting all the requirements for Beaver Creek's graduation. And I have to go over and track all of my kids from Xenia to make sure that they're meeting all of Xenia's graduation requirements. And I have to move to Bellbrook, and I have to go to Cedar Cliff, and I have to go to Greenview and Fairborn. So part of our challenge is keeping kids on task. Yes, they still participate in sports and activities in their home schools. It just is a little more tricky. We have to work and coordinate transportation differently for that to happen. They spend about half their day doing academics. They spend about two and a half hours, the other half of their day, ripping stuff apart and learning their trade. Um, and it's amazing to watch them do it. So today you're going in when we're in our senior lab. So you're going to see three or 400 of my 600 seniors that are out on job placement. So you're going to walk in and go, there are like four kids in here. <laughs> Why do we pay for this? There's only four kids in this building. Um, so please give us grace for that. Um, also give us grace. This would not have been the normal luncheon room, um, but because of the blood drive and because of the restaurants opening, Chef usually makes about $3,000 a day when he opens the restaurant for lunch. Um, so they were jammed down there today. That's why whenever he blows my phone up, I know it's a frantic day for the chef. <laughs> um, so what I've talked a lot. Um, what kinds of questions can I answer? Yes, ma'am. So and the potential shooting range, fire safety, all of that stuff, is that going to help solve the we don't have enough space problem? Or is that a different solution to a different It's going to help some. So okay. we, have, we have some programs okay. here that would be able to migrate to that new space that would open some potential space for us here. So it is going to give us some advantage on the space. Um, the tricky part on that is fire safety is a very expensive program to upstart. Uh, yesterday, I had a meeting with some folks who indicated that they have received approval to be able to possibly donate fire trucks to our program if we are able to start the program. That's massive because those alone are, you know, three quarters of a million dollars used. And that's if you're lucky. So they can be very expensive. It's yes. about the space issues. Yep. You know, early on coming through the building, you see that it's built for adaptability. Yeah, and so I, I assume, do you have an example of how uh, you've changed programs since you've opened and the, the flexibility of the space has allowed you to do that? Yeah, so thank you for pointing that out. When we designed this building, we on purpose wanted a lot of flexibility for movement. One of the things that traditionally happened in career technical centers is you've built them and they kept the same programs for 900 years, whether they had students in it or not, whether the job market needed them or not, that's just what we did. And everyone just stayed there. Um, and so when we designed this space, I when I came in, I've eliminated and moved programs out of here that were not meeting job market needs and were not successful. Um, it doesn't make me popular, but it makes more kids employable. And that's my major focus. Um, so when we designed this, we wanted a lot of room for flexibility. So you're going to notice, any of you who go on a tour, you're going to notice a lot of openness in this building and a lot of shared space. And that was very intentional so that we, we have high bay doors even on some of our inside lab areas so that we can move things in and out, vehicles in and out, different kind of components of that. So far, we haven't, our design was pretty good. We haven't had to make a lot of modifications. Our biggest challenge has been our drone technology space because they need to be able to do more than fly up and down. So we've been moving them to our multi-purpose room a little bit and getting some outdoor time with those students to be able to do a little different training on the drone side. Um, for the most part, we haven't had to make a big adjustment. We moved um, one health sciences space to a different health sciences space, but they were both similarly equipped. And the HVAC lab, we prepared for it to be a construction related trade, but we were able to apply for a grant with Super Rapids, which is an Ohio Department of Higher Education grant 
and we received two hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars in that grant to redo that space to make it ready for that HVAC lab. So, um, and I didn't mention after my meeting with the lieutenant governor, um, and I'm going to just be really candid, like I'm not, I don't think I ever had more of a less pleasant meeting with a politician than that meeting. Um, two days later, his office called and asked if they could come on a tour. So next week on Thursday, the lieutenant governor is coming for a tour. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, I do think it changed his mind because I also got a phone call yesterday from one of his aides saying, hey, there is some funds that is going to be moving to the Dayton Regional Manufacturing Association. Before we give it to them, we wanted to let you know to get in touch. We think you could use some of those funds for your Dayton initiative. So to your point, those conversations do matter. Yes, sir. Do you have both the design capability and the land available for the physical expansion of the facility? So on this site, we do not. Um, we own 37 acres on this property. Um, the um, properties that are adjacent to us would be properties that we would look at. We've also looked at some property in some other communities. Um, the tricky part for us becomes transportation. It's really hard to get kids bus on our on schedules when I have to accommodate their high school schedule, our schedule, and they're at a different place. So for instance, we have some kids out of the Green County Airport that are in our air free maintenance program. Those students, we have to bus out every morning, go get them at noon, bring them back, take a different group of kids out in the afternoon, bring them back in time to catch their buses to get back to Beaver Creek. So coordinating all the transportation and all the challenges around that are really tricky but the market is screaming for it. So we keep trying to be creative. We keep trying to find ways to be able to do that. Good, other questions for me here? So I think when you retire, you could probably have joined a lobby firm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't lie, I'm not a... So want to hang out and do a tour? Can you yeah. tell us what's what we yeah doing what you would be seeing? Yeah. So depending on how long you want to walk, obviously three hundred and ten yards is a lot of space. It is. Um, I I have given tours that can take two hours in this building, and I can hit some of the highlight spaces in probably about a half hour or so, forty minutes for anyone that might like to stay. Um, you definitely, if you haven't seen it, you want to go down and look at our take flight lab. That has our robotics area, um, our advanced engineering, our drone technologies, and cybersecurity space. So, but all the available for anyone that would like to do that. Hey, Dave, I got a quick question for you, sir. I know when you transferred to your old facility to here, yeah, you had thought that there wasn't going to be like adult education services. However, when we came in today, they said the adult education. So, what type of um, after high school? Uh, trains you guys have. So that's a really important question for a couple of reasons. And this is big, you know, this is big for the representative to hear also. Um, right now we run an adult criminal justice program. We offer all kinds of supports for adult law enforcement. So we do probation officer training, corrections office training. We're going to be doing all kinds of training with this neat virtual reality software that we offer. Um, adult ed programs and career tech centers all struggle fiscally. Every career center around Ohio struggles financially to run adult ed programs. Um, and it's in part because you, it's just hard to get people to enroll. Kids have to go to school. So we get a different option to give them a choice, um, but adults don't. So it's a little more tricky. What we are starting to shift to, and this is more of a trend that I think career centers around the state have, is we're moving to a model where we provide customized training for companies. So for instance, this plan that I was sharing with you from Dayton that we're looking to pilot, they're copying a plan we already put in place with a Beaver Creek Township company called QQE. Um, QQE contacted us and basically said, will you put our people through the standard training for manufacturing? You do the kind of theoretical part of that and the competency part of that. We'll bring our people on to work with your CNC mills and train them up on what we need and then those people will move into jobs, but you would help us upskill them and we'll pay you to help with that service. So that's what we're starting to see far more of an interest in. Is a shift of businesses specific saying, 
I want the training. Oh, I was out at uh, Emerge this morning, but last week I was at a founder's event for the Emerge Center, the old career center, and they asked if there any way that you could provide communications training to our technicians. It's a part of our curriculum already, but they, they're like, if you could offer that as a course, we would send our people to take it. So we're starting to see more of that customizable option coming from the industry. And, and why that matters is 45% of Ohio high school graduates capture that. 45% of them will leave high school with a diploma. They will not go to college and they will not have a trade or any kind of a skilled capacity or credential. So all equated, 94,000 kids in the state of Ohio are those kids leaving high school with no plan and really no training. <laughs> so the goal for us is we got to figure out ways to get more of those kids training because they could walk into companies other than a McDonald's job or a Wendy's job and make really good money, 120 grand in some of these businesses. So, yes, to your point, we are very focused on how we differently affect this on the adult population side. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Community Library, on your behalf, stay curious and keep exploring. Well, it seems to apply. Mm -hmm. Also, so, uh, okay. Uh, Next week's Founders Day, I need replies by 9 a.m. Monday morning for people. If you haven't gotten your email, get in contact with us uh, and on how to sign up. Um, keep an eye on the upcoming programs, beaverquickrotary.com and Facebook. Does anybody have anything else for the Good of Club? All right. I didn't see that flag back there, so I was preparing us with one on the screen. It's gone. Everybody will stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic, which is saying one nation under God, indivisible, free, and justice for all.